Welcome to the Freaky Film Club. I am your host, Jeremy Jordan, and I am joined once again by my good friends from our little film club, Damon, Mike, and Derek. Hi, guys. How's it going? So today we're taking a look at another classic uh, from 1974, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it's uh, about time we started to do some classics again because we were kind of veering off in a shit-tastic direction with Leprechaun 2 and Jason X. So (laughs) it's glad to steer back into more normalcy here. So um, I guess the first question is always, what was the first time you recall seeing this film? And it should be pretty easy for Derek and... Yeah, uh, <laughs> today, <laughs> an hour before we're doing this recording. <laughs> uh, what about you, Damon? Uh, I saw this um, at some point when I was a kid, like probably 11 or 12, the first time. Uh, oh. And throughout the years, I probably have watched it um, as many as probably between like 20 and 25 times. Uh, I did watch it for a college class as well once. Okay. As well. I just have a quick comment. Damon, you watched this movie when you were 11 or 12 years old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you have yeah. nightmares? Uh, no, I, that, none that I recall. I was more afraid of um, like the Jason movies than I was. But, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can I um, just go into a little sidebar here? It's kind of related. For sure. So yesterday I was talking with someone at work and um, she said that uh, she's taking her grandson to see Scream, the the new one. And, uh, you know, she was getting him all caught up on all of them. I don't think he had seen any of them before. And obviously the 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 scream movie that's out now was pretty different you know it was much more violent i thought and um you know it had it had a lot of bad language and things like that now her grandson's 15 do you think that that's uh appropriate or do you think that that's uh too young for that i i kind of thought it was a little a little odd to take a 15 year old um just because this screen movie was a lot more intense i thought it was was very different from the others i would be fine 15 years old um i yeah i was watching all sorts of bad things at 15 for sure well yeah i mean if you saw this at age 12 (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I kind of figured that, but that's, I think that's a little unusual, but maybe it's not, maybe it's not. What do you, what do Jeremy and Derek think? I mean, Jeremy, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it depends on the, the kid, but I definitely know I was probably watching a lot of bad stuff from an early age. I think the very first time I remember seeing something like semi-graphic, so weirdest thing, because I, I, I remember this very clearly. I was I was in a tent in the living room, and my sister was watching Idle Hands, <laughs> <laughs> and I was peeking out every once in a while to see what it was. Yeah. Uh, and um, from there, I mean, it just snowballed, and I was probably watching all sorts of bad stuff on cable. So, I mean, okay, in my opinion, fifteen probably isn't too too young. Speaking of which, what? um. I was gonna state um, there was a show on USA when I was a kid growing up um, called Saturday Night Nightmares. I don't know if anyone recalls that. That name seems so familiar. They Saturday. showed some pretty graphic. They were they were uncut. You know they were weren't edited. You know so you were seeing the, the real deal for the horror films. And I thought since we are actually recording this on a Saturday night, this is sort of like our Saturday Night Nightmare. <laughs> nice. What is Idle Hands? 
it was like a horror comedy. Um, it had a bunch of like '90s dudes in it. Um, Seth Green was in it. Uh, okay, I want to say Devin Sawa. I think was yeah, in it. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, it was in. I had Hollywood Video when I worked there. It was- it's actually pretty funny. I, I enjoyed it. Like actually like going back later and rewatching it as a as an adult, I really enjoyed it. Um but basically it's about like a hand that becomes like possessed and terrorizes <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and is it a graphic movie? Um I don't think it was like well, there's some stuff in it. Like I know one of the dudes gets like a bottle smashed in his head and then he be- comes back yeah. as like a zombie. <laughs> and then, okay. like, um, there's like nudity and stuff, so that was another thing. But I, I don't think it was like in terms of like insane, like gore. Like it wasn't like one of those types of movies. But mm-hmm. you know, it definitely had like deaths and stuff. Okay, Derek, what do you think about the 15 year old seeing? Uh, I mean, today's today? society, the way people are so sensitive. Um, I mean, parents. Wait, I mean access to things people can look things up so easily compared to when jeremy like when i mean mike same with you just when we were young like we didn't have that access to things um but i think it's more common to see that stuff a lot easier now um Mm -hmm. but i mean i don't think i would take personally i don't think i would take my kids to see it but Mm -hmm. i mean they could easily see something that graphic on tv when we don't even see it. Yeah. I mean, I saw a lot of messed up stuff on TV when I was just flipping through the channels as a kid anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was watching freaking like South Park and <laughs> yeah, like so much crude stuff in that show when I was a kid watching. I just came across that. I was on Comedy Central, just came across it and I just thought it was funny. But then there this guy kept dying in every episode, Kenny. <laughs> I'm like, what, what's going on? I don't know why I found that interesting and I kept watching it. But that's that was like a really crude show. Um, had a lot of like, uh, crude stuff going on in it i mean i mm-hmm. think just like flipping through the channels i mean i watched halloween granted that's not graphic but it is like brutal as in like okay people are getting murdered stuff like that mm-hmm. well but, i, I, I mean, believe texas chainsaw i also saw flipping through the channels um yeah and originally um uh the director was <laughs> going for a pg rating <laughs> no, I, 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 that. I saw that. Yeah, I read, <laughs> he's um, delusional. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the film Jaws, which is 1975, um, has a PG rating because that was before PG 13. Right. Um, but I mean, obviously, Jaws way more than most kids could take. You know. Yeah. I would say Jaws scared me more than than this. I know. I would say like that the same thing too i mean i don't know if you guys were the same like when you're young where you go by a pool and just worry that there might be a shark in it <laughs> i don't know why i had that like fear because of that i didn't want to go in the pool because i'm like there might be a shark in the pool <laughs> but then i'm like why did i think that there would not be a, why would there be a shark in a freaking chlorine pool <laughs> i remember i have, going... a, oh, I have a quick story but Go ahead, Jeremy. You were going to say something. I was just going to say, I remember going on the Jaws ride as a kid and being terrified, like absolutely terrified. Like, I don't think I opened my eyes once (laughs) the entire time. Where was that? Where's the Uh, Jaws ride? Universal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I don't know. I think I might have talked to you guys about this or maybe Jeremy or at the, you, you guys know the Milwaukee Public Museum. They have the the deep sea exhibit. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but um, and and just to get the records straight, I've never even seen Jaws, so the fears weren't from that. But I used to be terrified of the the deep sea exhibit where you, they have those circular windows where as you go to each window you're going deeper in the into the ocean Mm -hmm. do you guys know what i'm talking about yeah Mm -hmm. and you know it would start off just with the like the corals you know you're only i don't know six feet under and then the next window you're getting deeper and you're seeing bigger fish then you're seeing like um a sea turtle next window you're seeing like a barracuda and then 
the next window, you're really deep and you see a great white shark. And that just, I, I always hated going into there. That just used to freak me out. For some reason, deep water just freaks me out. I, I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be like, well, and I've actually been kind of stranded in the ocean. My family, we were lost for like an hour. Really? Um, yeah. Our, our um, jet ski capsized oh. and we were um, drifting out into the Gulf of Mexico. Thankfully, some people on a sailboat saw us. Otherwise, we would have, who knows when we would have been found. Holy um, crap. But um, yeah, so I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I'd like to see Jaws, but. Um, oh, so you've never actually seen the film? No, I've never okay. seen that movie. That is one that I've never gotten around to. That is definitely one I would mark on your list to see. Um, granted, yeah. I know you have some uh, fears of like the water and all that, which is well, a lot of people. Well, deep water. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's. It's irrational. So I'll mm. watch Jaws. I mean, mm. I use I have like a like a thing with like giant squids. Like I don't oh, know, they just yeah. freak me out. Like, have you guys been to House on the Rock? Oh yeah. So they have that giant octopus with the that's fighting the whale. When I was younger, I, I that used to terrify me, especially <laughs> when you walk like right by the octopus's eye. Mm. That okay. used to freak me out. So that's that's a know. place I know we talked about that place in the past. I know Damon, you brought it up. Um, even that's like right. Yeah, we did. We did. I've never right. actually been there. Yeah, we talked about going to the Halloween um setup that they mm -hmm. do. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we should do that. We should get on that. It'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there really so gonna be like place? mysterious like stuff we should check out? We could do it for the uh paranormal series and all that stuff too. Yeah. I don't know if there is anything there, but that would oh. pertain to that. Yeah. All right. Well, do you guys, what well, should we dive in? Yeah. Sure. All right. So the film opens up with um, a bit of a narration proclaiming that it's like what you're about to see is like the unfolding events of like the, the tragedy of these five people. They kind of make it sound like it was a real thing that happened. Yeah, that's literally what they were doing based on a true story. Yeah. Not like, not like this. <laughs> the director, he directed studied uh, documentary filmmaking, University of Texas, Austin. And I think a lot of the film actually it, it seems as almost though you're watching the documentary, and I think that's the part, that's what gives it its power. Sure. And I read that the guy I forget the guy who did it, but oh, he's a pretty famous dude. The guy that did the narration was paid <laughs> with weed. <laughs> yeah, John Lee. Weed. That's it. Yeah, what? <laughs> that was his payment. <laughs> um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. John um, Larroquette was on a uh, um, Night Court. I think they rebooted Night Court. But for those who remember eighty sitcoms, so we then cut to um, well, we hear like a bunch of different news reports in the background, and we see um, a mutilated corpse with other parts sticking out of it, and it's just really grotesque mm -hmm. and then we see sally jerry pam kirk and franklin in the van on a road trip and um they just start stopped at the side of the road because franklin has to piss and ends up falling down a hill <laughs> yeah was i was am i the only one who thought that was hilarious I thought that was hilarious. I went back and rewatched that. <laughs> I thought it was funny. The way yeah. he, this, and just what developed of that guy, Franklin. I'm just like, oh my goodness. But anyway, I thought that was funny. I'm sorry. I had to stop and say that. <laughs> oh, that's fair. <laughs> and so, wow. So for the record, two of you took pleasure in a handicapped person falling out of a wheelchair. <laughs> that's just the way they did it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I, I don't know what. 
just I was gonna. Well, imagine. I didn't know he was handy. Like what, like his full like disability was, or maybe he was just injured. I don't know, but <laughs> I just found that part funny. <laughs> The I, whole, I feel, yeah. what, what what was the point of that? That's my big question is why did they even show that? The And how did it even happen? I mean, he was sitting there and we're probably going into this way more than we need to. Yeah. That's the point. Of it's okay. It's program. a short movie. <laughs> yeah. Is he was already there for a while holding himself from rolling down the hill. Mm -hmm. And then some semi truck shows up and mm -hmm. like threw something at them. I didn't understand what that was. I don't know what it threw at them. And everybody like freaked out. And then suddenly he falls down the hill. It's like the hill yeah. was always there before he was mm -hmm. holding himself from falling the whole time. I didn't understand how that even happened. And I didn't understand why they even showed it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get that. I, I I think it was just uh, the sound of the semi was so loud that it um, the spooked him. caused him to lose his grip on the wheelchair and caused him to roll down the hill. But the reason I think that the, the scene is in the movie is to establish that he's he is in an in, in a wheelchair and that the wheelchair is going to cause a lot of problems for him throughout the rest of the film. Which it did. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So then they go over to the cemetery to check Sally and Franklin's grandfather's grave. Um, because there was a news report at the beginning of the film that mentioned someone had been vandalizing graves. Right, right. And there's a lot of unique characters hanging out outside of this this place. There's some dude yeah. just like laying down on the ground. And like, yeah, that was weird rambling about <sighs> bullshit <laughs> i was just surprised I, at how many people were there just kind of checking out the graveyard and all that i mean no granted people were probably there to make sure their loved ones weren't like disrupted yes. and all that but mm -hmm. so again i've seen this film many times but what struck me seeing it this time was um the compositions and how unique they were and so that's one of the things that stood out first was when they got to this area and then, yeah, there's like a drunk guy and they have like a Dutch tilt kind of yeah. composition on him. Just a very strange composition where it's sort of he's like upside down. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just so effective throughout the entire film, the way they framed things. It made it just seem as though you were seeing it for the first time. Was sure. that um, unique at the time for that type of shot to be used? Was that kind of like not well known to be used? Like, I would say it's it's unique now to, to photograph a film like that the way that they, they did that. Um, and I, I've seen probably I've probably seen all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, um, and they've never been able to equal the first. And I think one of the reasons is because it's too professional looking, mm -hmm. versus this one is it looks. People have pointed out that it looks like like an actual snuff, like sixteen millimeter snuff film. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think that that's what really makes it stand out. Yeah. You know, wasn't that guy also handicapped? Did anybody notice that? Uh, I don't think uh, he had legs. The dude at the cemetery? The one on the ground. Oh, I didn't, I didn't wasn't notice he, that. No. Wasn't he like in a tire? <laughs> Dana, what do you have to <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was... My impression was that he was passed out drunk. But that's what I thought. I thought he was just a crazy drunk nut nutbag or something. Yeah, um, he was inside of a tire. He was in the tire. I didn't realize that. And he had no I, lower body. That's worth a reload. <laughs> that's how it looked. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go back on that one. Yeah, yeah you should. <laughs> Somebody in the comments below. Just, uh, right. <laughs> So then after uh, after the cemetery, they get back on the road and eventually pick up a hitchhiker, which is ridiculous. I mean, who would do yeah. that? <laughs> I don't you know, know. I, I, have have a thing, that I, maybe. Yeah. I have a quick comment just uh, about the guy. Was that guy, because I didn't even fully understand what he was even talking about, but was that kind of like that character that a lot of horror movies have where they're like warning you that weird things are going to happen kind of like you know like the the 
the crazy guy from Friday the 13th? Is that kind of what that was going for there? That's kind of the vibe that I was getting from that. Nope. Yeah. Because does anybody remember what he did say? I, I I don't really remember. He was he was talking about the butcher house a lot. Um, explaining like how they cut up the animals and that. And then our, my, my, my favorite guy, Franklin, was you know, very interested in that. <laughs> 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 um but then he tried to and he was just getting really odd you know trying to take their picture and then he got the knife out and all oh, that wait kind of wait stuff. i'm not ta- i'm talking about the, the are you not talking about the, the same drunk, guy the drunk dude no i'm talking about the guy in the tire oh we're so. still talking about that guy oh yeah <laughs> i thought you were talking about the hitchhiker that weird no i i'm about. sorry i oh, went back sorry. i had more questions about the tire man oh <laughs> no i don't actually but, know what he was saying i don't remember okay i remember him saying that people thought it was like an old man that was doing the grave robbing um but he made it sound like it was something like more sinister so but anyway i just i i that character to me seemed like the 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 one who's like warning everybody of i see what things are gonna happen like the friday the 13th crazy man you're all doomed in the time (laughs) right right yeah right okay anyway so yeah so they they leave the cemetery and as you said derek they pick up the hitchhiker franklin's going on about the slaughterhouse yeah (laughs) <laughs> and, so he was uh, very invested in that like how they cut up animals you know? yeah yeah for sure <laughs> well you know and with the hitchhiker thing just responding to that i think people did pick up hitchhikers a lot in those days yeah did they that's not? What, back then it'd be a little bit more common compared to now where nobody would ever do that no no one even hitchhikes really anymore you know because i guess they know nobody's going to pick them up but this, but the group, the the five of them were okay with doing it for the most part. I believe mm-hmm. right? they were okay with just grabbing. Mm-hmm. Them. I'll give the guy a break. He can sit well, that one woman said, you know, how basically how good looking is the guy, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then she saw that he he's like, oh, he's weird looking. Yeah, Not pick him up, but it was too late. He was already right. getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah think Franklin, kind of one. Yeah, Franklin describes him as Dracula. That we just picked up Dracula. Mm-hmm. He's got a large um, purplish birthmark on his face. I was at the slaughterhouse. Yeah, you know, I, didn't, I didn't get that. I thought he did that to himself. You think that was a birthmark, though? That I was my he, initial like, impression. Cut himself. You know, I don't know. Um, yeah, so the, he starts to show them pictures of dead animals. He's See. carrying his little pouch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I carry a little pouch with you know. Oh, of course. You never know yeah. when you're gonna need to like whip out some photos or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah, he starts passing them around. I think he claims that he worked there, and that's you know why he has all those. And then uh he takes a photo of Franklin, and it's just this whole sequence is just so odd. He's he's really great at acting like Mm-hmm. Takes a photo of all of them. Okay, yeah. They, they pose as a kind of pose as a group. Yeah. And then he says, two dollars, I'll give you the photo. <laughs> it's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, just give it back to him. And then he takes the photo. And I don't really understand this. Like he puts the photo down on like some foil. Yeah. And then, like lights it up with like I don't even know what that was. And why he's doing what, this? What that was? Like he, he <laughs> I thought it was that stuff on it, and then yeah, I thought it was gunpowder. Gunpowder. That's what I figured. No. Yeah. And yeah, so he lights it and like freaks everyone out, and then they take him out. I mean, no. well, actually, no, I'm wrong because yeah. he cuts Franklin first. Yeah, asked for his yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that with well? Well, wait though. We kind of we also didn't mention that he cut himself. Oh yeah, yeah. That's probably that's pretty important. So he cut himself with Franklin's knife, right? And then he yeah. gave the knife back. Then he took his own cutter that he was yeah. in his shoe, and then he cut himself. Right. Yeah. Or you can know right. he cut Franklin. He cut Franklin with, with it. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. 
Right. And then everyone starts to freak out and then they kick him out. I'm like, that's when you decided to kick yeah. this guy out, Then <laughs> <laughs> It's about time, guys. <laughs> yeah. And then Hitchhiker, before he leaves, he um, smacks his hand on there, the side of the van and leaves some sort of strange mark that's going to come back later. Right. So then uh, they stop at a gas station and learn there is no gas there, according to the owner. Um, I should I point out something too, historically. So um, this film takes place on August 18th, 1973. And in 1973, um, there was a gas crisis uh, going on in the United States um, because the Arab countries um, were upset that the United States was um, being an ally to Israel. And so there are real, if you go back and look at photos of gas stations from 1973, there's really, really ridiculously long lines. So that's something that, you know, the fact that this gas station didn't have gas is something that would have been normal in August 18th, 1973. Okay. Was that also when like they'd have like the odd and even days or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they, they are told there's no gas, even though, and then there's that other dude who's like washing their car. Was yeah. that, was that a common thing? A guy would just take a bucket of water and start washing your car. <laughs> yeah. When, when I was a kid, when you, when you would stop at a gas station, someone would come, you wouldn't pump your own gas. Someone would come out yeah, and they would start yeah washing their window. Uh, I mean, yeah, that was a common yeah. thing. I remember back in the fifties that I remember learning they did that in the fifties a lot. I think there's actually some gas stations in the country that still do that. Just hmm. would clean your car like that, pump your own gas. I believe there's a law in New Jersey where you cannot get out and pump your own gas. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I just heard that on a podcast. Huh. Yeah. You know, I just, I wanted to say something real quick, just for the record, the, cause I did a story about this, the oil crisis thing, the embargo that, that didn't start till October of 73 so that wouldn't have happened yet yeah but, but this either, film was made in that 74 so people would have, been, would have been aware of it yeah but you were saying it it takes place august 73 so this wouldn't the embargo wouldn't be going on yet yeah i don't think that the, the directors they just wanted to set, they wanted to set the film on a very hot day so they just picked the day in august right. you know but um i don't think that they were trying to be that historically accurate Okay, I'm not gonna go back and forth with you about it, but never mind. Um, so they don't get gas, but they do get barbecue. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. Um, then uh, they. Well, that's what Franklin's eating later, or no? Was he eating something? Yeah, he I'm was fast forwarding, or I couldn't tell if he was eating something or if he was smoking something. I think he was eating the barbecue. Okay. Yeah, and um, once they leave the gas station, they end up at an abandoned house. Yeah, you know, well, it's the house of um, uh, it's Sally and Franklin's uh, grandfather's house. Oh, it is okay. That's so. What's yeah. the one that he asked the attendant about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Did anybody find it funny how the guy who washed the windshield he kept coming back every time? Yeah. The owner like reinitiated the conversation. I noticed yeah. that. It's, it's like he thought they were different people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. like, oh, nope. Gotta go back out. <laughs> he'd come back. Yeah, and then he'd slap that on there again on the yeah. windshield and it's did we ever see that guy again in the i don't think so in the movie i don't think he ever reappeared no, no i don't think so so because he just really... did the windshield right that was all he did <laughs> no, he did the headlight <laughs> he did the, the grill um, okay because it was just the front at... of the, the van because he didn't yeah obviously see the blood marks on the side of the van that the, the weird guy right did. right yeah yeah and i and that would be normal you yeah. know that they'd clean just the front yeah you know um 
And I, I heard about that too, Damon, with the um the New Jersey thing. Um there is a law still. It's kind of goofy in New Jersey. Um you're you cannot pump your own gas in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They still have that law where did, they, does, did it say why that's in place? It it, it just goes back from the days of like the 50s and 60s when they used to have attendance yeah. like in the movie that would pump the gas they just never they never updated it to that's weird today's situation yeah but yeah and i think um parts of oregon too have that law where you can't so a lot of people say that they hate getting gas in new jersey because um it takes longer, you mm -hmm. know, because someone yeah. else is doing it. You need some, you need an employee to do it. Yeah. So that's weird. That is that's weird. <laughs> I should ask uh, Kelly's side because a lot of her uncles live out in New Jersey. So that's where her mom's oh. from. So I should yeah, bring that up. You to should. Her. Yeah. See what they say about that if that's yeah. still accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so back at the house, um, they start exploring. And um, I wrote, Franklin is not having a good time. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's having a hard time catching up with them. And he once he finally does get in the house, he's kind of just like, you know, um, talking to himself. He's like, oh, it would be so much fun, Franklin. Come along. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's just not having any fun. Um, and uh, eventually Kirk and Pam take off toward the uh, the creek. And um, they discover another house that is using gas power generators. So um, Kirk has the idea that he can maybe barter with them to get some gas. Mm -hmm. um, Quick question for everybody. Is Franklin, obviously he is physically handicapped. But mentally? Is he, is he all there mentally? I don't think, think so. When I saw him, I found him very annoying to the point where I'm just like, I know he's not going to make it. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> but I just knew he wasn't going to make it. <laughs> well, you, you let you enjoy watching him fall down hills. And I just... But then, I don't know. Like, when he was in the house, he was just being such a whiner. But Well, I, well, I mean... It... In a way, can you blame him? I mean, he's listening to them all having fun. And while he he's can't behind. get up the stairs, you know? Right. Um, no, I see that. But for me, I thought he was kind of a little mental when um, in that scene that you just talked about, Jeremy, where he was like down on the lower level and then he kept like making those weird noises. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's when I thought he was a little... I actually, but I don't actually think he was supposed to be mentally there. I to me yeah. the actor was the writing for him and the acting was bizarre. I yeah. just I, I actually thought after he had that encounter with that crazy guy on the road, that after he got cut on the hand there, like uh -huh. after they got to the van and they arrived at the house, he was like you could tell that he wasn't really there. He was asking all these bizarre questions. Like how would you feel if you cut yourself? Well, he said that to uh, hmm. Kurt. He said that to Kurt. Oh, the yeah, like, yeah. Maybe he's, something happened to him. Now he's kind of going insane. But maybe that's just the way this character was. That's just kind of the way it ended up being in the long run. But I thought something was happening with him there mentally that was making him go even more insane. But I don't know if you guys kind of thought that he was a little weird when he was asking those questions in the van to well yeah. plus i mean now that you mention it i remembered too when he was going into detail about the the slaughtering of the cows mm -hmm. you know how they like the 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 air gun how he kept he's like yeah yeah he did that so many times he kept like doing it <laughs> now i i just remembered that now that yeah. you say that yeah yeah i thought he was a little off i mean yeah. i know damon I what did you think about uh um, he probably would be you know on the autistic spectrum you know at some some level okay, okay. Mm -hmm. one thing i didn't pick up on uh, as they get near the generator so they there's a house nearby you know uh where the grandfather's house is close enough that it's within you know walking distance as they get closer to hearing the generator um 
Kirk um, lifts up a tarp and he sees a bunch of old cars. Mm-hmm. And that's something I didn't pick up on uh, before. But, so I'm assuming those are all vehicles for people who they killed in the past that they wanted to hide. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even consider that, actually. That does make sense. Yeah. It's just a very brief shot. Uh, and you've only, like, at the time in the movie, you know, it's just a bunch of old cars. Mm-hmm. But then you get the idea that after watching it, that it probably was where they hid the cars. That makes sense, yeah. 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 And also, at this point, we see uh, one of the generators is a Wisconsin generator. Big shout was out. Was it really? I didn't <laughs> yeah. see that. <laughs> I saw that, too. I didn't know that was a brand. I didn't either. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, I don't. I wonder if they put that in there intentionally because of the whole Ed Gein connection. Or if really? it was just... Oh, they just right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, too. Or, or it was just cheap to use that license or whatever. <laughs> or somebody literally just like, oh, I got this generator. And he was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But they were using it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, um, they make their way into the, well, Kirk makes his way into the house and um, he gets hit with a hammer. This is the first appearance of Leatherface. He comes out yeah. of like a sliding door, hits him with a hammer. And um, pretty quick. I mean, no, no, nothing is like ever really too graphic in this. It's just a few whacks, and he was he's down. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, there was, I mean, uh, when Kirk goes down, though, his his legs begin to flop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, they did uh, flop around because he was getting like smacked in the face at least a couple times there. And then. Uh, shortly after that, Pam enters into the house and stumbles into a room filled with bones and a chicken in a cage. Yeah, and all sorts of other weird stuff. Um, I, I read briefly, like Damien, you probably already know this, that those bones that was actually all real, like ammo bones and stuff that they were using um, in the movie. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that, but I um, know that um, the film. Part of the inspiration of the film was Ed Gein, and so th- this is where I think this scene is where you see the that tie in the most. You see furniture made out of out of skulls and bones and things yeah. like that, and you get the idea that um, whoever lives here is you know you know very bonkers crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she... uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add to it for uh, the just setting the. The scene is add that there's a a chicken in a really tiny cage. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That kind of bugged me a little bit. It bugged I you? mean, it could barely. Yeah, it could barely move. It's in this what? tiny little cage. Well, he doesn't care. He's there. To... <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't care? Leatherface. <laughs> yeah, but I'm and saying other... for the I'm saying for the purposes of oh, making for the... the movie. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. That's all. Well, yeah, they 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 really made like that. I mean, I agree. Like that purpose of the movie, like for the chicken and all that, and just mm-hmm. making the actors themselves they were really uncomfortable just doing that scene. Like, uh, what's her name? Uh, who ran in there and noticed all that? Um, Pam. She, Pam. The book, yeah, Pam. But she noticed all that. Like she, she did not like doing that scene with real like animal bones, the feathers, all that stuff. And there was actual like real like roadkill that they grabbed and uh-huh. used in those scenes. And they were like really uncomfortable doing that stuff. So that yeah, kind uh, of was like oh, it really brought into the fear and just uncomfortableness for that whole scene for her. Um. They, when they shot this, um, I'm not sure exactly what when uh, in summer that they shot it, but uh, it was very hot and it, it was very stuffy inside of that house, and it was sort of miserable shooting conditions. And I think it that comes out in the um, and plus they shot all night, and it's in some of the later scenes you get the idea that um, uh, the actors are sort of kind of going crazy just because of the conditions they've been put in you yeah. know so yeah damon do you know how long they spent filming the movie overall no no i don't i did the um the original um 
Scream, I sent this to Derek. So the in Scream One, um, the last third of the film, the third act is uh all takes place at night uh at uh Stu's house and it took them twenty one days to shoot that. And they said at the end of the twenty one days everyone was they just you know, they're so relieved to be done and everyone's yeah. blood and kind of the same thing, everyone's just kind of naturally going crazy because they're so exhausted over over having mm-hmm. spent, you know, all night or night twenty one days in a row shooting. Yeah, sure. I would guess this film was shot pretty quick, you know, because it it had a, a small budget. Mm-hmm. Which I should point out too that I don't know if anyone did any research as to um, the director uh, had a, a good friend who put up the money, but he put up the money in the form of a he formed a company, and um, the rights got bandied around a couple different times, but. Uh, the cast and crew, even after this film had made millions of dollars, which, uh, you know, when adjusted for inflation, this was, you know, a huge film, that the, the original cast and crew didn't get hardly anything. They were kind of cheated out of. Um, That's what I was wondering, like how the much money. they all were paid. Yeah. Kind of like in the original Halloween, like a lot of them weren't paid very much to do that film either. That sucks. Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, this is kind of like a. Like a Blair Witch type, uh, made for just very very little money, but then it went on to gross. I think something like so budget was eighty to one hundred forty thousand, but that was nineteen seventy you know four dollars, and then the box office thirty point nine million, which adjusted today would be well over a hundred. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was a huge hit, um, despite being banned in several countries. And the budget was what? It was just between eighty and one hundred and forty thousand. Oh wow! Uh, I think they had to uh, add some money in the editing process because they had kind of run out at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. But yeah, so Pam is in the room with the Ed Gein room, basically, and then she begins to vomit, and she runs out of the house, and this is such a cool scene. And just as she, the door is open and she, like one, two feet out on the front porch, Leatherface grabs her from behind and just pulls her back into what in horror is known as the very bad place where the evil guy lives. And then <laughs> puts her on a meat hook while she's yeah. still alive and tears her on a meat Ow. hook. <laughs> and then uh, begins to uh, chainsaw Kirk up while she watches. So probably the greatest seen in horror history for me yeah yeah right on. i i can't think of any better can you jeremy i mean nothing that it really comes to mind at the moment but i mean it's a yeah it's a hell of a sequence <laughs> really showcases his character to you like head on right there like the craziness of him yeah yeah so shortly after that Jerry takes off to look for Kirk and Pam and starts, the sun starts to set and um, he gets eventually into the house as well. And he discovers Pam's body in uh, like a chest freezer. One just before that though, cause he kind of this, the other uh, kills were kind of set up with this as well. That, did you notice that when they were at the door, knocking at the door, that um, you kind of heard like animal type noises coming from within? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess that would be that was Leatherface making those noises. Oh, oh. Is, is that what we were supposed to? I would. I, I don't think Leatherface is capable of speaking, is he? I thought he was making so. those noises throughout the movie. Yeah, I thought he was making those noises to lure the people into the house. Okay. That makes sense. Because every time before someone comes in, you hear the, the little animal noises, you know, uh-huh. like just enough to make you curious as to what's going on inside. Yeah. Yeah. So Jerry finds the body of Pam in the, in the freezer. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to set that up, though, too. Uh, he hears um, rattling, like rattle, yeah. rattle, 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 uh-huh. rattle. And then. Uh, he opens it up 
And then the pan doesn't shoot out first. She's just sort of laying there motionless. So you get the idea that she's just like her body is just sort of uncontrollably doing this every few minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, like she doesn't have. And then so yeah, and then she pops out and and uh, Leatherface shows up again. Mm-hmm. Shoves her back in. Hits her Jerry over the head with a hammer. Mm-hmm. This is like he, he was out cold. <laughs> <laughs> like man, he was down. That was it. <laughs> and down goes Jerry. <laughs> yeah. And then Leatherface poses, locks Pam in again. Yes. So she's still alive. So you get the idea that he is doing it uh to for enjoyment yeah he wants to keep her in there for enjoyment he doesn't want her to die he wants to hear her rattling about in the freezer and then he has this i don't know if this is in the same scene or not but he has like an odd moment of (laughs) contemplation well (laughs) looking out he he sat down (laughs) i think i what i think happens is i think he realizes that the situation is getting out of control and that um uh his you know father and brother are going to be angry with him because he let some people some people got maybe you know this is getting into he doesn't know how many more people could be showing up because sure you know, yeah. every few minutes someone new shows up yeah well that, that works because that does tie in later with why his brother the weird old hitchhiker gets in trouble with the dad so yeah um so then we're back at uh the van as sally and franklin are trying to alert the others by hitting the horn a bunch of times and they're freaked out um sally eventually decides like all right i'm gonna go look for them like it's been too long franklin is freaking out he doesn't want to go yeah uh this is where you know i would say in terms of Franklin's mind state, he seems pretty rational because he keeps on saying we need to go back to the gas station. Mm-hmm. We need so he kind of understands that the situation is getting out of control. Uh he, and um he's, that's where I, I kind of think that um he's being a little bit more rational than, than Sally is at this point. Um but eventually um he realizes that the car keys have been taken from the van and so they have to go look for them at this point. Yeah. They can't. Yeah. The Sally wanted to go on her own because she can't push uh, Franklin around because of the wheelchair and it's on the ground and all that, the gravel and grass, but she ends up doing it anyway. Yeah. I thought like Sally begging for the flashlight was, I mean, one of the many great, moments for her as as an actress in this like she was just really like you could feel like the terror and like like give me please give me the flashlight like yeah. it was like really it was good i mean yeah um maybe he actually wasn't letting go and he was supposed to and she's like give me that. <laughs> they just put it went with it <laughs> what was interesting too with this scene is um uh as they're walking through the field they were calling out, and that reminded me when we shot Beast of Bray Road that you know they were like, <laughs> Derek, Derek. <Yeah. laughs> like it's it's exactly what we were doing. Yeah, thank God we didn't calling meet out. the same fate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we did run into Werecow that night. Though. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Leatherface pops out of the woods, and slices up franklin sad and, day sad yeah day. poor franklin yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um sally takes off running um she heads towards the house enters in closes the door uh leatherface starts to you know chop it down and mm. she heads upstairs into the attic and we see grandpa and someone else's rotting corpse um, Grandma, I believe. Probably, makes yeah. Sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just one quick comment. I mean, just based on other times we've met, you guys probably know that I get bothered when things aren't done r- realistically. <laughs> Did anybody else get bothered how Leatherface just was there? You know, I mean, he had the chainsaw on in order to kill Franklin. 
They didn't yeah. hear it. They never heard the chainsaw. Yeah. Uh, well, going back, I should have brought this point up. Um, back at the van, they were honking away, and I, to me, that's they were giving away their location to other face at that point. No, that, right. That I get that, it. but I'm saying the chainsaw was. I mean, it does even when it's idling, and the chain isn't running, it's still making noise. Mm-hmm. Oh, he just oh, Frank, came out of yeah. nowhere. Frankly, yeah. does he does state I hear something. But we didn't, as the um, viewer. Yeah. No, that. Yeah. Yeah. See, things like that. You kind of just like kind of popped up and then boom. You That's hear what it. I'm saying. That's my point. Yeah. That 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 wasn't done very realistically. That's all. I gotcha. Uh, well, yeah. we shot piece of debris. <laughs> you were claiming to hear things that weren't really. <laughs> I and I made comments about that too. <laughs> realistic. <laughs> No. All right. Well, so then, uh, oh, yeah, Sally. So eventually, Leatherface makes it back into the house. He chops the door completely down. Sally jumps out of a window. and Second floor window. Right. And uh, she makes her way back to the gas station. Where that whole scene of them, like, oh, sorry, Jerry. No, go ahead. Oh, like that whole scene of them running, that was like a good five minutes almost. Yeah, yeah. Five we, plus minutes. Mm-hmm. Just to bring that, so that. she jumps out of the window, hits the ground hard, and she's kind of paused for a minute. Yeah. She looks back up, Leatherface looks out the window, and um, it's almost like the scene in Friday the 13th, part three, where, you know, she's looking from the boat and she sees his head pop up from the window. Yes, and yeah. He's on Jeremy's top five moments. <laughs> excited Jason moment. <laughs> so that was excited Leatherface. So he he chases her and man is he close to her. Yeah. Uh, like he it seems like he's just maybe inches from from cutting. It does gradually, down. like the closer the, like to the gas station he is getting that much closer to her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, yeah, it's it's an intense sequence um, when she's Leatherface is so close behind her. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the other thing too that kind of brings up is um, Leatherface is in pretty good shape for uh-huh. for how much overweight yeah. he is. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he can keep up with Sally, who's like probably twenty or twenty one, and you know, it's probably built like bone. a bear. Yeah, good cardio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean that does make sense. He's got to get he gets that cardio built in. All those people he's killed. He's yeah, getting that exercise in the meantime, so he he knows what he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. right. <laughs> that chainsaw has got to be somewhat heavy. You know, that run full speed with that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I see Mike shaking his head down there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not commenting. He's gonna start the, the leather face diet slash workout routine. <laughs> leather leather face workout routine. <laughs> Does Got anybody know? Since we're talking about the physicality of him, how tall is that actor? Because he seems like a huge guy. Yeah, his name is Gunner. Uh, Gunner Hansen. Yeah. Gunner Hansen. I, I know from not from um, Wikipedia, but from like a separate like documentary or interview thing that he um, when this film premiered, uh, he took a date to, to Texas Chainsaw. And at the end of, end of the night, the date was just like, I want nothing to do with you. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's really not a good first date. Like, hey, see what I did. Let's see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he's six oh. four. Okay. Yeah. Did and he play all the other leather faces too in the in the sequels? Not I don't think so. No. I think he like came back for some like his like cameo in the forms of cameos, but I think as Leatherface, I think it was just this one, if I'm not okay. mistaken. But I also I was reading something about this dude too, since we're on the topic. He it's kind of weird, but he went like in order to get ready for this role, like he went to like a special needs school to see how everyone there acted. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, 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 I did read that. Okay. Yeah. So oh. he really wanted to make Leatherface like I guess like that. Um, I was gonna say like maybe like a psych ward or something like that would make more sense. But I wouldn't have think 
not the other one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're now at the gas station, <laughs> and um, <laughs> she's she thinks she's well. She tr- thinks she this she's the dude is comforting her. I mean, it's, it would all appear that maybe things are okay at the moment, but it's really yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, just to bring up this. So when I saw this film for the first time, um, and maybe uh, Derek and uh, Mike can attest to this, um, I, I wasn't aware of the relationship between the gas station owner and the rest of the family. Yeah. Uh, so when she is. You know, when he's comfort- comforting her, I'm like uh, thinking Leatherface is going to pop up any second. Yeah. Uh, same thing when, when he goes to get the, the truck, he leaves the door open. And I'm just thinking Leatherface is going to pop up any second. Well, I think the director, in, that's what he intended the audience he to feel. got me to think that. So, Derek, you did think that, that he was, yeah. the face was going to pop up at any second? Yeah, I thought he, when he was going to go back outside looking, he was like, oh, there's nobody here. I thought maybe he was going to get, like, knocked off, or even when he brought the truck back, he was going to get knocked off there. What, Mike, what about, since this was your first time, did you did you suspect that Lala Face was going to pop up any second? Yeah, I did. I, I thought he might come in. I, I mean, and like you said, I think the director wanted us to think that, too with how they kind of zoomed in on her face when the um, owner was out getting the truck. Um, But then I thought, too, I was like, well, why would Leatherface just suddenly stop wanting to kill her just because another person is there? So I kind of thought, well, maybe they're, you know, working together. But initially, I I definitely thought he was going to come in. So and as the door is open, uh, Sally looks over and sees the barbecue area and in, in the back of the gas station, and it appears as though um, it, it kind of looks like a human torso is being cooked. Mm-hmm. Did anyone else get that impression? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, tying this back to Motel Hell, uh, <laughs> that um, the gas station owner is cooking human humans and selling the barbecue and i think this is actually the plot of texas chainsaw part two that they make i make a big deal of mm. that mm. Yeah. um yeah so he comes back in um and it's clear that he's got his intentions are not pure he's got like a sack and a weapon <laughs> and <laughs> Oh, that's right. She's the one that yeah, pulls the knife out. He he attacks her with a broom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somehow, Mike's just like no, <laughs> no. <laughs> that th- just that was the most ridiculous <laughs> fight scene I think I've ever seen. That was so pathetic <laughs> that, that that she just gave in after these light wax with a broom. Yeah. I thought that was ridiculous, but. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I mean, didn't you guys? I mean, who, like, yeah. who gives up that easily? Yeah. She just oh, went for sure. hell. Considering and, how much and, fight and she has broom, later. Yeah. Broom. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that yeah, it's just all that running that's struggling to get out. And he was being so gentle, too. You know, he's just like, whack, whack. <laughs> you know, these little swats. Yeah. They, I mean, the character is, this is flashing forward just a bit, but he makes a comment later on that um, he doesn't have the heart to kill. Yeah. So maybe that's the reason he was doing the light blows. Uh, sure. he, yeah. But that, the broom does break and he is hitting her with sort of a short end of a, you know, so maybe if you got hit enough times right, you know, in the temple, maybe that could knock a person out. Yeah. Um, so the he loads her into the truck and starts heading toward back towards the house. Puts her in a sack. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Puts her in a sack. And um they he runs into well, we see the hitchhiker from earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, there there's one great scene as they're driving, he starts poking her with a stick and he starts laughing as he's poking. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So you get the idea that he, you know, he's insane as well at this point. He's in charge. Sure. He's insane. Yeah. 
And uh, so, yeah, then they run into the hitchhiker from before. He starts scolding him about grave robbing. <laughs> so he learned that he was the one that had done all these things prior. Yeah. And um, then you learn also that this is the brother. This is Leatherface's brother. And, and the sad cam comes off and Sally sees uh, the hitchhiker and then realizes, oh, no, this is the person from earlier in the afternoon. That was when she was in the house, right? When she was actually, they brought her back in the house, or was that in the truck? Um, I that was in the house. I think that was in the house. Yeah. Maybe. I think yeah. that was once he tied her to the chair. Okay. Yeah, because she was like, bring bring her inside or whatever. I think yeah. that's what it was, while she was uh-huh. still in the sack and tied up. Yeah. And... So at the same time that this is going on, the dude from the gas station is starting to like Leatherface comes out try, like in woman's clothing. Yeah, I, I was confused <laughs> by this. Is this is Leatherface? <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm not gonna lie. I thought that. Oh, okay. there's another one. <laughs> yeah. Wait, th- you, Derek, you actually thought that was a different I person? I thought it was another family member, a, a woman. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it was just him, Justin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the dude, he starts scolding him about the door, which I thought was hilarious. He's like, you broke the, up the- yeah. Yeah. It was- He says, look at what your brother did to the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a big laugh. Not for sure. That's a good one, yeah. Um, so then... Uh, at a point when the film needed a laugh, too. Right. Like, uh, it was at the point like that's what you're worried about the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then they bring the two brothers, Leatherface and the Hitchhiker, bring Grandpa downstairs, and this is like really disturbing. They yeah. like, they cut Sally's finger, and Grandpa just starts sucking it. <laughs> I'm just like, does and, he uh, need his blood to live right now or something like that? Or you know? I read uh, that that was real. That's that was insane. a real thing. That's insane. That he, they, they cut her finger and he drank yeah, her blood. Yeah, because they couldn't actually like do it. So they didn't have the fake blood or something, so they actually cut her finger, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't okay, think so I have fly to... on today's film set. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, the health risks, I'm, first of all, but so grandpa is living just barely. that's what i was a little confused just about barely. like what's his situation he, he yes. looks really bad but i'm like yeah, is like yeah. A- you, you mean dead <laughs> yeah like <laughs> dead pretty much yes he is like um probably days away from death but still okay. just a little bit alive okay yeah um so <sighs> <laughs> what about grandma? Is grandma living too? No, she's, no, she's, she's dead upstairs. Her, she's decomposed. Okay, I can't that was her what she looked in like. The other wheelchair upstairs, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so at this point, Sally passes out, I think, right? Is that after the, the thing? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, she passes out and then um, wakes up and family is eating. And having dinner, and there's a plate set for Sally. Wow, put food on it. Yeah, it's Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a um, great scene. <laughs> yeah, this is like, this is where I wrote wild close-ups on Sally's eyes. So this is again where you see the compositions just really make the make this really really bizarre sequence because they get so close to her eyes that you can just see like the veins in her eyes and things mm-hmm. like that, and you know, so it's cutting away from what she's looking at and then just to her eyes and uh, it just adds really really well done i just love the unison screaming um as she's screaming everyone at the table just starts yeah that was that was yeah they did that for a little like almost a minute (laughs) i was like i was watching this movie upstairs and i was like don't worry dad it's it's nothing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like there's nothing going on <laughs> you might hear a lot of stuff up here yeah um, yeah speaking of which uh parents getting upset over movie scenes two instances come to mind um one was um reservoir dogs uh the ear cutting scene so, the infant, oh, so I, yeah i happened to be playing that uh in the afternoon on a mother's day and uh <laughs> 
my mom saw it and she started going ballistic. I think she actually brought the tears. Oh man! Um, the second uh, on uh, in the Godfather Part Two. How many of you have seen Godfather Part Two? A long time ago. So at the very end, where they're in the boat, Fredo and Michael Corleone, and um, uh, right before uh, Michael kills Fredo, um, I think they say that our father. And uh, so the Jeremy obviously you went to Catholic school, so you're familiar with uh, our father. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mom just saying, oh, are they going to start to say more Our Fathers and kill each other again? <laughs> 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 yeah. That, that scene from Reservoir Dogs when the ear was getting cut off, that's the same. This is why I think I think of this all the time. When I hear that song, I think of when we did um, <laughs> that movie in college um, yeah. with Mike. Jerry Damon, Wells. And, yeah, Jerry Wells when you guys were robbing my apartment or Damon's apartment at the time. You played that song during that scene. I think of that scene all the time because of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's that's the awesome. song? Stuck in the middle. Yeah. Oh. Stuck in the middle okay. with you. Yeah. 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 Okay. I never saw Reservoir Dogs, so I don't know okay. what. But yeah, uh, I think of that all the time. That was the just the, when we shot that film. Um, we uh, uh, knew someone who had a large van. Uh, per, I think it was a purple colored man and um, we were somewhere in um, was I don't know if we were in Sussex or Waukesha but we sort of jumped out of the van with like sunglasses on and hats and <laughs> some neighbor lady started getting going crazy that we were like you know, she yeah, she's not we happy really were, gonna, we were, uh, we really mm-hmm. were gonna like rob someone yeah, yeah. So what are you guys doing you can't go by that house <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you remember that? Yeah, I hate yeah. it. <laughs> I think we did. We just choose. We just chose a random house, didn't we? Yeah, we yes, did. <laughs> it was. It was the neighborhood right across the street from the school. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Beware of people who are home during the day instead of at work. They usually don't have much to do, and they're kind of looking to get in a fight. <laughs> well, nice. the 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 reason that I said i hated her is because i get why you'd be concerned initially yeah but Makes she sense. kept she kept insisting that we were up to no good when we're showing our faces we're talking to her we're not trying to leave we're cooperating we're have showing her the camera sense. yeah yes yeah we're filming you're right we're filming it have some rational thought it's yeah. ridiculous that's why i was so <laughs> angry with her yeah. To everybody watching, this is something that happened like what 12, 11 years ago or something like that. Oh, geez, <laughs> yeah. that's insane. <laughs> right. <laughs> it reminds well, good times, good times. Yeah. It reminds me of the time that the that dude came out and yelled at us for filming in the back of the alley when we were oh, yeah, I, remember I that. think we were during gonna... unbalanced. It was. Yeah. It was back of the piano store. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you're good, I would have just asked me. Then it would have been fine, no problem. And then we were and like, this, "Well, we're leaving anyway, so we'll keep you." And, <laughs> and this goes back to what Damon told us back our first <laughs> lesson in filmmaking when we did our first college film. You guys get clearance for this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we didn't get clearance for that technically. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, anywho, yeah. But what's that so phrase? What Beg permission and ask forgiveness. Yeah, uh, yeah. you film just film anyways, and then. It's it's much easier to ask forgiveness than to ask permission, sort of. Um, yeah. I've been told that by multiple filmmakers. Just you know, mm-hmm. um, got to get the shot. Got to do what you got to do. But one of the, so they're back at the howling at the at the table, and then um, the gas station owner makes the remark. They decide that they're gonna let uh, Grandpa kill Sally. <sighs> And the gas station owner makes the remark yeah. that Gra- Grandpa once killed sixty cows in five minutes. That's how good he was. <laughs> That's how big he was. Yeah. So apparently he worked at the slaughter factory. Uh, so sixty cows in so, five minutes. Yeah, he would like take the thing, or no? They where did they talk about it in the movie? That's or? twelve, twelve per minute. So it's one almost every ten seconds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but Grandpa is no longer the same man he once was, and 
he keeps dropping the hammer over and over. He, he can't grip it, and so every time they try to place the hammer over Shelly's head, it just drops into the into the bucket because they want to smash her head into a bucket. Yeah. When I when I saw that, I was kind of thinking, is he kind of trying to let her go? No, he's just so, so invalid that he can't he can't um, okay. grasp the, the hammer. So then um, the hitchhiker guy. He gets so he gets very excited. He suddenly wants to become the person. He's been holding Sally down, and he, he suddenly wants to be the person to kill Sally. So he lets Sally go briefly for a second so he can take a grab at the hammer. And when he does, Sally immediately jumps up and runs and breaks through the first story window and uh, lands outside just as the sun is coming up sort of during magic hour. Mm-hmm. And she starts running towards the main road, being closely followed by the hitchhiker. And hitchhiker's following her so close that he's slashing her back. Yeah, it was like purposely, like run, like he could probably easily catch up to her and knock her down. But he's like having fun, purposely, like Damon was saying, slashing her back, grabbing onto her. He's just having fun with it. Mm-hmm. And then Leatherface is behind the two of them. He had to go grab his chainsaw, so he's a few, <laughs> a few beats back. Yeah. Uh, and Jeremy. Well, and then uh, she they make it out to the middle of the road where the hitchhiker is killed by an oncoming <laughs> truck <laughs> in kind of an odd sequence because it's like I don't know they're both the same. Yeah. You know, the same it's like sec like inches away yeah yeah I, somehow, I thought that was a great death I thought it yeah <laughs> it was cool i, I mean yeah. nice to see people like that get their their comeuppance <laughs> right uh, so like, uh, he, like he got his full run over like his body and then his head yeah, yeah. his head is crushed under the wheel yeah probably like one of the most graphic things in the movie yeah yeah so yeah the director um did not um but he shaved a few minutes of the gore out of the film because he did want that PG rating. So some of the, you know, some of the gore within the kills, and maybe this is, you know, one of them where you would have seen more blood come out. Right. Um, so the truck stops and the truck driver gets out to see what he's done. And But at that point, Leatherface is on them and he starts chasing Sally and the truck driver. Mm-hmm. Did um, anybody find the whole truck driver thing funny? A little bit. It was just like really random. <laughs> like he just, I don't know, he didn't say anything to the girl. He didn't try to fight the guy off or do What's anything. What's there to say? I don't know. What, what would he, he didn't say? Scream or he didn't show like any emotion. He just kind of was running. <laughs> I don't know. That was a little, okay, don't show any emotion, I guess. <laughs> well, initially they get back into the truck and they, they close the door, but then another face starts to cut through the door so they decide just to open the passenger side door of the truck up and get out of the truck again and start running again but the truck driver also just before he leaves his cab picks up a large wrench and uh, as they're running um, Leatherface starts to chase them down again and the truck driver does an about face and uh, from about five or six feet, he throws the wrench and he nails him directly in the face. And uh, causing Leatherface to drop to the ground, losing control of his chainsaw, which cuts into his thigh, Leatherface's thigh. Um, yes. So Jeremy, pick it up. <laughs> well, and from there, uh, another truck comes, a pickup truck comes on the scene. And... Um. Sal- well, Sally makes her way towards that. As truck driver just kept on running. <laughs> he just yeah, the go truck anyway, driver kept going. goes totally off screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Leatherface gets back up, starts chasing Sally once again, and looks like it's really going to be close. But Sally makes it into the bed of the truck. But. Leatherface at this point kind of like throws his chainsaw up in the air, like, <laughs> and I mean that's really Long about scene. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, it's an iconic shot. Uh, Leatherface is swinging his chainsaw 
Into the Sunrise. Um, very famous. How many of you have seen American Psycho? It's been a while, but I... I yeah. Really so, yeah, the Christian Bale character in American Psycho, he's always sort of looking at that image of uh, at the end of Texas Chainsaw, Leatherface swinging his, his chainsaw around. Mm -hmm. One reason why the truck driver might not have jumped into the to the pickup truck was um that might have been his semi truck that he owned and he didn't want to abandon it. Um that's a possibility as well. Yeah, sure. But we Is don't really know. Yeah. yeah, it's like he could have that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't really <laughs> seem like he was safe. <laughs> yeah. But so Jeremy, just real quick, were you saying before that you thought that uh Sally would have been run over too by the semi truck it's, because they were I mean, so close to each other. It or? seemed like it could have easily been a possibility. Yeah. Okay. But mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Just yeah, yeah. she close. broke free at kind of right at the end there. Yeah, you know that's fair. And, yeah. Going back to a film shoot when I was in uh, at UW Oshkosh, um, I was shooting in downtown Oshkosh. Um, and this is um, this is a long shoot day. Um, it was like a Saturday morning, but we shot from probably like eight in the morning to like you know when the sun went down or as the sun started going down. And uh, I was just so busy that day, you know, with so many things, keeping track of so many things, so many different shots and things like that. And um, my audio guy Dan Cowan. As I was crossing, I was about to step across this into the uh, from the sidewalk onto a city street, and uh, just as I was about to, my audio guy went yells, "David, stop!" <laughs> <laughs> and a city bus passes within like six inches, like it would have flattened me. Holy shit! And, uh, wow. like, yeah, so yeah, it could, you know, it could, you know, within six inches, yeah, like yeah, make uh, a difference. It, yeah, it would have. I if. if Man, if, if he wouldn't have yelled that, I, I don't know what would have happened. Mm -hmm. you know? Jeez. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. I was about to say that semi truck driver, he some say he's still running. He's still running. <laughs> <laughs> he's got better cardio at this point yeah. than Leatherface. <laughs> That's what they really should have focused on in the in the yeah. follow up movies. Like what what happened to the truck driver? Yeah, what to that guy? <laughs> Where is that guy? Is he all right? <laughs> oh yeah. So that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, let's get into the hell yeah moments. Um, I'll just say mine was the screaming at the dinner table scene. <laughs> I really just I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really funny. Yeah. Is it bad to say that? Um, when uh, Franklin got butchered. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> I actually thought he was gonna make it to the very end, you know, uh -huh. like with Sally, like a little bit further in to like their. But I see what they were doing with Sally, like venturing it off with just her going through it all herself. So I see now why they killed him off at that point. But I originally yeah, I thought read, he was going to maybe get killed at the end a little bit further out. I read an essay. Um, there's a famous essay called Men, Women, and Chainsaws um, written by a woman named Clover. I can't think of her last name or first name. Um, it was either in this article or it was in a, in a book of essays. But it talked about when Franklin gets killed, like it was like, it was supposed to demasculate him. Huh. Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, the chainsaw is like, a, um, you know, it's supposed to be a penis, basically. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, check out, uh, check out Men, Women, and Chainsaws. It's a famous <laughs> I, I, would, I think I would just come up to Google because it's a really famous essay. Yeah. Um, my hell yeah moment would be... Um, the freezer opening up mm. and then Pam mm. jumping out of the freezer, you know, um, it gets me every time. Good one. Yeah. Well, it's just her face too, like position that she was in too. 
Mm-hmm. And they made her look blue. I mean, she looked like yeah. she had been, you know, in a freezer. Plus, I just, I just, I don't think I could think of a worse way to die, really. Other than uh, the brother getting run over by the semi. <laughs> that's yeah, I mean, sure that's that, in, that was that's quick. instantaneous. That's yeah. Like, oh, no, no, no I see. Okay, that makes sense. You know, like you, <clears> it wasn't you long, could, it was quick. You could live in, in that freezer for probably mm-hmm. a couple hours, you know? Like, yeah. I'm, I don't know if um, they don't make uh, refrigerators like this anymore, I don't think. But back in like 70s and the 80s, um, if you went into a freezer, it would lock and you wouldn't be able to get in, get out. And so yeah. kids, some kids died like that, that they would, they were playing in, you know, a, a refrigerator or a freezer and then. Um, they would close on them and be locked. Yeah. And then you couldn't get out you know, from the other side. That's awful. So maybe that my parents are, uh, they kind of, uh, they warned me about that a lot. Like, don't ever go and play around the fridge or freezer because yeah. you get locked inside. And so maybe that's the, why I, w- I thought that was such a scary moment. Hmm. What about you, Mike? Well, I just wanted to set the record. So, Derek, your, was that was your hell yeah moment? The I have to think thing? about it again. Oh. Granted, I've okay. only seen it once. So, there's probably definitely a, ha- a better hell yeah, a way better hell of a moment than that. But what about him that, falling down the hill? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, like like we said at the beginning. I don't know why. I mean, now I mean, Damon went into it too. Why they did that? Um, I'd have to think about it again. But those two that you guys have already said are make sense. I'm learning a lot about you tonight, Derek. With your <laughs> with your pleasure and. All this misfortune. To it Franklin. was the way it happened. <laughs> I didn't think you were that type. I thought, I think, Depends I upon didn't... the movie and the characters. <laughs> yeah. I will say that Sally, I was actually getting really annoyed with, with her constant screaming. It was a little overdone for me. Thank like, you. Well, that was a little much. But, um, yeah. So it's <laughs> men, Anywho. Men, women, and chainsaws, gender in the modern horror film. Carol J. Clover, 1992. Okay. Um, are we going to do like a overall like thoughts on the movie after this or? Yeah, you still have to do your hell yeah moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, Jeremy, is that's what is that supposed to be? Is that like the moment like you were blown away by something or what? what is that? Uh, just like favorite moment, one of your favorite moments in the film. Or like moments that stuck out to you? I would say uh, it was when we first saw Leatherface. It kind of, it was so quick. Um, Mm -hmm. I actually rewound to watch it again just because it was so quick and kind of unexpected how he just popped out Mm -hmm. from that room with all the animal skulls on the wall. And then also the, I was just surprised. I, I didn't expect that metal door to be in oh, a that house open. like that. Yeah, that slit, that a sliding metal door. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect them to have like a trap type situation in a house like that. Speaking of rewinding, um, Peter Jackson, who you know from Lord of the Rings series, he stated when he first watched this for the very first time, it was a 16 millimeter projection. Uh, that the very first thing he did was he rewound it and watched it again. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He was so impressed by it. Uh-huh. That's cool. All right. So final rating. Um, I give this film four and a half meat hooks out of five. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just thought it's, I mean, it's, it's a classic. It's, it's like the definitive horror film for anyone that is studying the genre Mm-hmm. Um, it so unnerving the way it's shot. Um, and a lot of the performances are just like they feel very real. And so this is just something that uh, will always be so, like a, a revisit for me. So, all right, uh, I'm gonna give it um, five out of five Ed Geens. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is one of the best horror films. This, this, and The Shining, uh, and pre- maybe the original Scream 
I'd have as you know one, two, and three as the top horror films ever made. Mike, you next. I gotta think about it. Okay. I'll 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 use my own little um not my own rating system, but my own little item. I'll give it a uh, three out of five Wisconsin generators. Nice. <laughs> so, I like that. <laughs> that's what I'll say. Uh, I will also give it a three. What's a what's a fun way to say three? Uh, wheelchairs. <laughs> yes, three wheelchairs out of five. <laughs> that takes us all the way back. That brings us back to the beginning then when we started talking about the wheelchair beginning. Yeah. So it was three, a three, uh four and a, half, five, and a five. Four and a half. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I figured say oh go ahead. I was just gonna say, Derek, I thought you and I would be on the same page. Just the yeah. way you started off the the hour. Yeah. I, I definitely would want to give it another rewatch. I don't know when, but I love I mean, out of any horror movie that I've seen, I still love Halloween the most. Probably because I've seen it the most along with Scream. Um, just mm -hmm. the, that movie creeped me out as a kid. I mean, granted, if I saw this when I was a kid, I'd probably be creeped out just as much. But Halloween, I saw so many times and I just studied it. Uh, just the creepiness of being stalked. Um, it's the fact you don't know where he is and just keeps going after you and just doesn't uh -huh. stop. I think I just fell in love with that horror aspect. Um, and I still, I will have to give this movie another couple more watches to get onto that same level. But yeah. I would say one thing that I think is important is pay attention to um, how crazy the actors are acting, especially towards those end scenes. Like when they're around Sally, like uh, I think that everyone is they've been shooting in this super hot Texas weather, um, you know, night after night, and you know, they you know, just under these horrific shooting conditions. And I, th I really do think that they're losing their minds, and the film captured that, you know, so it's, it's something that um, you really are witnessing people going crazy. Where was it shot again? Uh, I think. Near Austin, um, okay. the, the house that it was shot in, you can now take tours in. Because I sent you the article I sent you on Scream, who, yeah, Stu Mocker's house. Um, whoever bought it, someone bought it in 2013. He didn't even know who bought what, what house, he didn't know he was buying anything special. <laughs> and he just saw people showing up in their cars wanting to look at it. And then, yeah, someone decided that it would be a good idea to charge $200. Per tour of the house, so now you can you can um, tour Stu Mocker's house for two hundred dollars, and you can I think you can stay overnight in the uh, um, Texas Chainsaw house, I believe. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I had a question, Jeremy. When you first watched the movie, how old were you when you first saw this? I was pretty young, um, probably like my uh, probably like early teens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like I okay. knew I was aware of it, but I I think I probably put it off for a while. Mm -hmm. So I have a I one of my big fears is chainsaws for a long for yeah. Still, really to this day, I hate chainsaws, but um, yeah, it was definitely a film I was aware of. But yeah, I don't think I finally got around to it until like early teens yeah so Derek how come you gave it a three what were your reasons um primarily because I haven't seen it I have, I like to do multiple watches of films to understand them a little bit more see things I missed the first time so I mean you guys mentioned some stuff that I pretty much knew tonight there's a few things hidden meetings behind things that Damon and Jeremy you discussed um, that I want to watch it again um, so once I see it a few more times, it'll probably go up, um, just the enjoyment value. Um, that's why I rank Halloween scream so many times because I've seen it and I've seen the study dumb, the ain't how they shoot it, why they shot it like that. And that's what I want to do with this one. Okay. Cause I was going to say that 
the reason I gave it a three is I I would give probably like the first two thirds of the movie like a four out of five. I thought it was effective, but I don't know about you guys, but the the whole ending pretty much as soon as Sally gets into the gas station and they have the broom incident. And then certainly with the dinner, I, I thought that was getting so absurd. It was becoming humorous. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't. Did you think that with Sally's constant screaming, like she really didn't stop. That was driving me nuts. The constant screaming, because first of all, (laughs) And here I go again. What is that doing for her? Nobody's going to find her. She's screaming, you know, why? I I mean, I get that she's in constant fear, but that's no one's going to find her, you know? And And she's run up to, and sometimes too, if somebody hears somebody screaming like crazy, they won't approach them like that. If she's actually looking for help. Right, right. So, and then just the part that we mentioned where uh, where I said kind of what the hell is this was when um, they're all at the dinner table and she's screaming and the rest of the people are just laughing crazy. I, I, I couldn't, to me, that wasn't like scary. That was just getting like, this is absurd with, with the, the, the horror here. It was just getting too too ridiculous i thought it was over the top and i get that they i think that this movie probably was really scary when it came out i can see like the weird you know like the weird uh camera angles and things like that that damon mentioned i can see how that would be uh something that would not be normal that that was not seen before on film so i can see how that would be so definitely something new um so i think unfortunately just with it being older now and having a lot of other movies kind of take things from it and copy we've we've kind of seen stuff before like that but so i think that it was probably really effective then yeah but i i couldn't get into that ending just and then the part with the where they're where they're like helping the grandpa hold the hammer i i i I, that was just getting like like parody i I thought i this movie was so was um this is the movie that inspired motel hell correct didn't you say that damon uh parts of motel hell yeah right right i thought this movie seemed like the parody version like motel hell wasn't the parody this was the parody i thought this movie was crazier than motel hell especially the dinner scene that was nuts how they're all laughing and 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 um she's screaming and then and then again with the the grandpa i was questioning like like i said i thought he was dead but then i see him move i see him moving and that, and I know I actually thought he was dead when he was first shown upstairs in the rocking chair. Right. It's like he looked right. he wasn't really moving at all. I actually thought he was dead. And then just the I just the whole th- the way he looked. I mean, what living person looks like that? You know? <laughs> he looked like someone that was just brought out of a coffin. <laughs> Well, yeah. Except he was alive. He's not what he used to be, but there was. <laughs> He's not what he used to be. <laughs> <laughs> he did kill so, all those cows, though. Before, yeah. right, right. So I just thought they took it a little too far. I thought it, where it was getting absurd, and I couldn't. They lost me. They lost me. I was laughing. That's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah that's I the, couldn't. I, that's one what? of the things I really appreciated about the second half was really the absurdity. Yeah. I yeah. I couldn't. It, it lost me though. I thought it went too far. It went too far, and the screaming. Oh my god. Well, that's the, honestly the screaming, the absurdity thing. I was I was getting at like, okay, they're trying to show how insane these people are, how insane to the point where they're killing people and turning them into lamps and killing people for fun and enjoying it. So yeah. I understood that, but yeah, Mike, the screaming was a little overdone. I think 
<laughs> I was, yeah, I'm not, and I'm not with you, Jeremy. Sorry about the <laughs> acting. Sally's acting. I'm not yeah. there. Really? Okay. I mean, I'm not saying she was bad. Yeah. I'm just saying the screaming was sure just yeah. overdone completely. Even with the scene you mentioned with the flashlight, I thought that was getting a little ridiculous too. How they're they're fighting. Oh, it's like there were some there were some issues I thought with the the script. It wasn't really the the, I the acting. It was more the writing i think i thought sally was going to get to the point where she was trying to get that flashlight from him that she was actually going to knock him out so she would get the flashlight and run off i actually thought uh, she was going to do that but obviously that didn't happen i know mike has seen acts because we saw it together jeremy or derek did you see acts mm -hmm. so uh, yeah in the film acts um it's a group of uh you know low budget filmmakers are going out into the texas a small texas area to shoot um a porn but it's supposed to be um uh in this person's garage but they don't know what they're filming but clearly i, I think uh the film acts is it's supposed to be on it's supposed to be like the texas chainsaw massacre and that um they're trying to show just how low budget it was and um if you ever get around to see next which is a really good movie is that a movie that came out like a few years ago? No, it came out out of uh, March of last year. Was it March of last year? Okay. Yeah. I was going to say that too, Damon, is that that almost seemed like the same house, almost. Like, yeah. it could have been the same house. So you get the idea, if you, I mean, if you watch X, you get the idea of oh, these people <laughs> did not have a lot of equipment, and they didn't have a lot going on, you know. So that's, when I, some of the things that maybe you disliked about it, I, I guess I, probably could appreciate just because I've been in situations and low budget filmmaking situations. And to me, when I see stuff like some of the stuff they did in the house and some of the decisions that they made, I, I think they, to me, it's just, they made the most with what, with what they had. And it was really yeah. effective, you know, and you, you have to be aware that this is not a multi-million dollar production. This was a right. shoestring, you know, a shoestring film. Um, much was, like much like the Blair Witch Project was, where you know um, everything just kind of happened to come together in a perfect way. I was kind of thinking when we were talking um, about Mike when you were saying the the screaming that Sally was doing, and then I kind of wanted to say maybe they're not going to help her. Some nobody wants to help this girl. She's screaming. She sounds insane. I kind of thought back, like wait, back in Halloween, that was almost the same thing when Lori was trying to get help. She was running up to people's doors mm -hmm. after she, what she saw, and people turned the lights off on her. Yeah. She, yeah. They, these I people remember are that. thinking that she's insane. Like, oh, we don't want to help you out. What are you doing? Go away. So that well, kind of, like, you know. My, my point, too, is also, though, that no one is there to help. Like, they're so isolated mm -hmm. that nobody is even there to even have the opportunity to help. When she runs to the road, there, I, I think a passing car probably could have heard her scream from the house. Well, and that's one thing I was going to mention is that where was this road the whole time? I mean, th they're honking that horn. You know, somebody would have heard that, too. They're hearing people say Jerry. You know, I know that was at night, but the road kind of came out of nowhere. Like suddenly there's this busy road. Yeah, maybe um, they weren't. She wasn't aware of where the road was because it was nighttime, and so mm -hmm. she didn't, wasn't able to see it until the day. I'm gonna add a little story too, just a personal story. That kind of I agree with you, Derek, about how people don't necessarily want to get involved if somebody's screaming. Mm -hmm. But I'll I'll give you a, a a story where someone did get involved. Okay, where someone was screaming. It was me. Really? Um, I, yeah. <laughs> it's a goofy story i was playing video games with my cousin uh i was we i don't know i was maybe 10 and i was just getting really into it and i was screaming because like i was i don't know i i don't know why i was screaming but i was and it wasn't like sally screaming but it no. was i was yelling and being loud and it was summer so we had the windows open in the house the neighbor from across the street came over and said, 
is everything okay over here? Okay. <laughs> she thought somebody was in trouble. Okay. Nice. <laughs> but no, I was like, I was having fun with this game. That's why I was screaming. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then I yeah. wanted to add too, just with the, so evidently I get how the ending would be iconic. I can totally understand that with the swinging of the, the chainsaw. And he's angry that she got away. I get how that would be iconic. Again, though, none of that like kind of seemed over the top for you guys. I mean, just the the image of it. Look at what's happening here. There is a six foot four man wearing a really poorly fitting suit with a tie that's like all loose and hanging down. He's wearing a woman's wig. He's got like, first of all, someone else's face on his face. And then on that, he's got like this weird, splotchy old ladies makeup on, like lipstick kind of splotched over here and like blue eyeshadow. I don't understand how they could get through that scene without laughing. I, I, I just thought that was just so ridiculous. I don't, I give him a lot of credit for getting through that in a serious way I, I, I wouldn't have been able to my guess is that that wasn't in the script and they were they were just in the roadway with the sun coming up and the director or the cinematographer which cinematographer guy named daniel pearl give him a lot of credit just said i think it would be cool if he started swinging the chainsaw and i'll film you while you do it and I, I think that's probably what uh, it was and it just it worked yeah, yeah. I, I again though i still don't I wouldn't be able to hold it together with the absurdity of that. I was reading the uh, trivia here quick on IMDb. <laughs> that joint, the guy was, the narration was paid in a marijuana joint. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like the first thing. <laughs> and then, I don't know, here's one goof, Damon, you probably saw this. A goof that was made in the film. The blood that the hitchhiker smears on the van apparently is gone in the next shot later on, or like a few seconds later. It's gone in the long uh, shot. Yeah, I didn't catch that. I, I know it's on there at the end when they're beeping the horn because Franklin yeah. keeps on. Uh, he's Franklin's very afraid of that mark for whatever reason. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that uh, that's it, I guess. I mean, unless you guys had any other thoughts. Definitely worth a rewatch on my end. Yeah. Take a look at it again. I'm probably not soon, but it's definitely like to add. I would want to have this to my uh, horror movie watch for Halloween this year. Yeah. All right. Well, once again, thank you guys for being a part of this episode. And I look forward to many more films in the future. Oh, yeah. Freaky Film Club off. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Damon. Bye.